Hello, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Rochester. In today's bonus video, we'll be building the Riverfront Park downtown, known as Major Charles Carroll Plaza. I'll be going over a few tricks and procedural objects to make builds like this easier, talking about the history of this plaza, and later in the video, I'll also be talking about the future plans for this area in real life as well as for the project in game. We are back in Rochester today as we build this really unique park alongside the Genesee River. As you can see though, first I'm placing down some parking garages here, and that's because today's park build is actually going to be covering an underground parking garage. In real life, this park plaza covers 600 parking spaces in what is known as the Crossroads Genesee Garage. If you're new to the channel, in this project I am trying to replicate the city of Rochester, New York with a great level of detail. From the first time I saw this park while planning out this project, I really wanted to take on the challenge of building it in-game and seeing how close I could get it, while also keeping everything functional. For now, you can see I've used procedural objects to shape the garages underneath what will soon become the shape of the park. But you'll see I come back later in the build with the same garage assets and I sink them underneath to allow cars to park here again. As always, all assets used in the build can be found at the bottom of the screen, but I also went ahead and created a Steam collection of all the assets used today, which you can find a link to in the description below. Today's build was a really fun challenge, and I have been excited to take on this park for a while, but I was also a bit nervous, because I wasn't really sure at first how to capture some of these details, especially the circular stairs on the top level that you just saw me complete. I ended up going with these stair network assets, as recommended by fellow content and asset creator Marijuant. I just used the mods Move It and Node Controller to shape them into the shapes I needed. From there, the park wasn't too difficult to build with the help of a few tricks that I show off later, but it was definitely one of the more complex builds I've taken on to date. This park has four different levels of course, and it's all covering a parking garage down below. In order to bring the ground level up above the terrain and create this elevated grassy park, I needed the help of these ploppable grass surface assets by Ronix69. But of course, if I really wanted to replicate the look of the park, I also had to get the slopes right. And that's where these slope profile network assets by the Heeks come in. If you remember, in episode 2, I used these assets to help create the sunken expressway downtown known as the Inner Loop. They're really great for creating these natural looking slopes without messing with any of the in-game terrain tools, which if you've had experience with using them, I'm sure you'll know are quite finicky. the other stairs in this park, I'm using this pedestrian bridge asset pack. These are really PO friendly assets, but they can also be used together as basic props along with the help of the mod Move It. With these assets, I'm able to use the customization tool and later on the distort tool to really shape these exactly how I need them, which is really helpful for high detail builds or recreations like this where alignment's really going to matter.
As I'm building out these pedestrian bridges, I wanted to highlight a few of the shortcuts and tricks that I use in procedural objects and move it to make builds like this even easier. Instead of trying to align everything like elevations and rotations by hand and using guesswork, I use a few shortcuts with Move It and PO to snap everything into place. You can match the elevations of multiple objects in Move It by using the hotkey Ctrl plus H and clicking any item to select it and move it. This will set everything you have selected to the height of the last object you select. You can also do this with procedural objects. If you select one or multiple objects in PO and then hold Ctrl plus H while clicking on the plus symbol of another procedural object, it will automatically align the heights of all the objects selected to the last one you've clicked. The same trick also works for rotation in PO, and it doesn't matter which kind of rotation you want, it can be any rotation on any axis. Just hold Ctrl R instead while you make your selections and all of your objects will have perfectly aligned rotations. If you want to learn even more tricks in PO, or you're just starting out with the mod and want a guide on some of the features, I've linked my beginner's tutorial above. As I mentioned earlier in the video, today's build is focused on a riverfront park on Andrews Street in downtown Rochester known as Major Charles Carroll Plaza, also formerly known as Genesee Crossroads Park. But of course, this park wasn't always here. This park was built in the footprint of the once bustling market district known as Front Street. Front Street was one of the oldest streets in the city, known for its local meat markets, bars, pawn shops, and bargain restaurants. A unique atmosphere emanated from the strip of businesses where you could find anyone from politicians to the houseless coexisting together. However, during the mid-1960s, Front Street was demolished as part of a $70 million urban renewal project aimed at cleaning up the city. The project also included the construction of new office towers and the U.S. Federal Courthouse. A decade later in 1973, the park was renamed to its current designation to honor the late Major Charles Carroll. Major Carroll, along with William Fitzhugh, are sometimes known as the co-founders of the city of Rochester by way of establishing the 100-acre track which placed a sawmill on the western bank of the Genesee River in 1803. The location of this historic sawmill that established the city is now where Broad Street can be found today. This park was built in the modernist style, and it spans from Andrews Street to Main Street behind the courthouse on State Street. Despite its size and prime location, the park has fallen into neglect and some serious disrepair forcing the city to close the park to reevaluate and make plans to rebuild the critical infrastructure. The locals that I personally talked to don't know much about this park, and online I found that some Rochester residents are not fond of it, to say the least. But there are now plans in place to modernize and revitalize the park as part of the Rock the Riverway project. This project aims to bring the park into the 21st century and bring some much needed repair and modernization to both the plaza and the sister city's bridge that crosses over the Genesee River. Some Rochester locals have also requested that the city consider renaming the park, as the current name memorializing Charles Carroll has been called into question recently, due to the Carroll family's status and wealth being the result of slave holding in Maryland, as well as Carroll's pro-slavery stance throughout the Civil War. The community in Rochester, as well as the Rochester City School District, have been working to revisit the local names of landmarks which memorialize slaveholders, and the residents believe that this revitalization project is an appropriate time to discuss a name change for the plaza. City Council members made a resolution to vote on the matter of renaming the park in late 2021, but I wasn't able to find any results of that vote or much more information than that. Other major changes being brought to the park from the revitalization efforts include improved pedestrian links, interactive art installations, improved safety features like reducing the verticality of the park and improved lighting, as well as maximizing the views of the Genesee River below. In part two of my project, I also plan to revisit this plaza and build it to match the real-life revitalization efforts. The plans are set to go into effect in late 2023 so I look forward to seeing what changes the city have in store for this long neglected piece of Rochester's riverfront. With the 
bark structure built, I'm moving on to the detailing portion of the build now. Just a moment ago, you saw me switch out the texture of the paths to this nice red brick color. Now I'm placing down some foliage. And normally, if you watch my videos, I use low poly or lightweight assets for foliage like Podomo's low tri tree assets. But since this park is a major focus downtown, I decided to go with some more detailed trees here instead. These trees of course will affect performance a bit more due to their higher level of detail, but used sparingly, they should be fine to use in high detail areas like this for a better and more realistic visual appearance. Now that I have pretty much all of the details in place, it's time to make this park functional. The first step I'm taking here is to lay out these elevated pedestrian paths by Kloos. I'm using a few different sized networks here to try to allow for the sims to make full use of my decorative networks below. Again, I use the shortcut with Move It Control H to align the heights where I want them. I use these paths as a visual reference, and then later I convert them using the upgrade tool to some invisible path assets keeping each network the same size.
as a final touch, and to get the park functioning with the game mechanics, I hide a few of these park attraction service block assets in the park. These blocks will act the same as park life assets, and will get more sims walking through the park. I hide two of them in these fake elevators that I made that would go to the garage in real life. 